Here's my first life lesson, inspired by the movie title Divana. Madness, of the particularly nice or romantic kind, is an absolute prerequisite to a happy and successful life. Don't ever treat your little insanities as if they are aberrations that ought to be hidden from the rest of the world. Acknowledge them and use them to define your own way of living, the only life you have. All the most beautiful people in the world, the most creative, the ones who led revolutions, who discovered and invented things, did so because they embraced their own idiosyncrasies. There's no such thing as normal. Normal is just another word for lifeless. So my next lesson is the following. If you find, ever find yourself cheated of all your money and sleeping on a grave, do not fear. A miracle is near, either that or a ghost. But all you have to do is fall asleep, trust me. In other words, no matter how bad it gets, life is the miracle you are searching for. There is no other one around the corner. Develop the faith in it to let it take its own course. Make all the efforts you can to abide by its beauty and it will not let you down. Use every resource you have been given, your mental faculties, the ability of your heart to love and feel for those around you, your health and good fortune, all of the thousands of gifts life has given you to their maximum potential. Honor your life, please. Honor each gift and each moment by not laying it to waste. There is no real measure of success in this world except the ability to make good of life's endowments to you. Sometimes life's gifts arrive wrapped in all wrong damn wrapping. At which point we have to learn to do two things with them. Recognize them for what they are and gamble, our, gamble on our fear that they might be disaster. This brings me to my third life lesson, inspired by two movies in which I played the anti-hero, Dar and Bazigar. If those stories I won't tell you, you seem to know them. <laughs> but 20 years ago in the movies, roles were very clearly defined. They provided the security of your stardom in a sense. If you'd been successfully playing an angry young man, you'd pretty much be angry and young for the rest of your life. If you'd been a police inspector in three movies, odds were you'd be in the next 33 too. This applied to female actresses also. Wives were wives, seductresses were seductresses, mother-in-laws were mother-in-laws and so on and so forth. Few actors would have willingly switched from romantic heroes to obsessively violent lovers. I took the leap not because I was particularly brave, but because a very dear director friend of mine sat me down and told me I was extremely ugly. And being ugly necessarily meant I do bad guy roles. I wasn't the romantic hero types, he said. Actually, he used the words that my face was not chocolatey enough. I started to eat a lot of chocolate and while waiting for it to take effect, I jumped into bad guy roles. Dar means fair in Hindi and everyone always tells you at speeches like this that you ought to be brave. So I'm not going to bore you with that idea. Instead, let me tell you this. Being brave means being shit scared all the way to the party. Uh, I'm sorry if that word is being very scared all the way to the party. But getting there, but getting there all the same and doing the funky chicken in front of all your teenage kids friends anyway. Let me just add on behalf of all the fathers of the world who have embarrassed their kids by doing this. It takes a lot of bravery, resolve and grit to do it. Just do it. Don't let your fears become boxes that enclose you. Open them out. Feel them and turn them into the greatest courage you are capable of. I promise you, nothing will go wrong. And in which I was the victim of a lover's confusion. And my next lesson is precisely that. It's okay to be confused. Confusion is the root to all the clarity in the world. Don't worry about it too much. Don't ever take yourself serious, seriously enough to be so clear about your own ideas that you stop respecting other people's. Our values are our values. They don't make us any better than anyone else. At best, they just make us different. Always try to see the other person's truth because like every movie has a story, every human being has one too and you have no right to imagine that yours is better than anyone else's. You can leave that silliness to my esteemed colleagues and me. Life lesson number four, raise its head. Give of yourself to others and while you are at it, make sure you realize that you aren't doing anyone any favors by being kind to them. It's all just to make you feel that sneaky little twinge that comes from being utterly pleased with yourself. After all, the one that gets the most benefit out of any act of kindness or charity that you do will always be you. I don't say this as many see it in a transactive or karmic way. It's not an I do good, I get benefit equation with some white bearded figure taking notes from the heavens above. It's a simple truth. An act of goodness becomes worthless when you assign a brownie point to yourself for it, no matter how subtly you allow yourself to do so. As benevolent as your gesture might be, someone else could have made it too. Regardless of how rich, successful and famous you become, don't ever ever underestimate the grace that other people bestow upon you 
just by being the recipient of your kindnesses. You might be able to buy your friend a rolls for his or her birthday, but it's no substitute for a patient hearing of your sulky rants on a bad hair day. Sometimes things just happen, as encapsulated. My fifth lesson is this. When life hits you with all the force of its resplendent rage, the rolls isn't going to give you comfort. A friend's grace will. And if you can't find resolution as, e as easily as you would like to, please don't panic. Everything evolves as you go along. Even disasters eventually resolve themselves. Give life the space to move at its own pace, pushing it ahead only by way of being kind to yourself when you're hurting or in despair. And you will be hurting and despairing a lot in this lifetime. You don't always have to figure things out or find an explanation for the circumstances you are in. It's more prudent to accept that sometimes there just isn't one. And that's lesson number six for you. All the names you give yourself or those that others call you are just labels. You're not defined by them no matter how flattering or uncomplimentary they are. What defines you genuinely is your heart. Ask or read about the artist formerly known as Prince and you learn a thing or two from him if you don't believe this insanely sexy Indian superstar telling you so. But I generally say this out of experience because if I was to go by what I'm called on the social media, I would be an old, desperate, manipulative has-been star who swings both ways making crap movies. And these are just the good mentions. If you aren't charged about doing something, if you don't have what in Hindi we call josh, the fire in your belly for it, then don't do it. It's a waste of your time and more importantly, of those who pin their hopes on your endeavors too. Redefine yourself if you have to, but do it on your own terms and just get on with it. In fact, like my character in the movie, my name is Khan, if you've seen it. Don't forget where you came from. Please don't forget where you came from and who you really are. It ought to be the compass by which you navigate through life's vicissitudes. The north that keeps you oriented, despite a series of misfortunes or a shower of privilege. Life lesson number seven. Whatever it is that is pulling you back, it's not going away unless you stand up and start forging your own path with all your might in the opposite direction. Stop whining and start moving, so to speak. I didn't mean the kid. Sadness and happiness, I'm sorry, she can whine. Sadness and happiness have the same quality of transience. Life is a balanced exchange of one with the other. And this is lesson number eight. Don't attach yourself to either. They're both going to change with the same certitude. Take them with the ephemeral spirit of their impermanence and manage them with a healthy dose of good humor. Laugh at yourself when you're despairing. Shed a tear or two. It means to be happy sometimes and sad others. It's the very beauty of a life lived in full measure. Why fall, fail yourself by desiring one emotion and detesting the other? But most importantly, my friends, love yourselves. Embrace all that this life has in store for you. Let your heart be as deep as the deepest ocean and as wide as the furthest horizon. Know that it is limitless. Love is not an excuse to grab or to hold on or own or to barter. It is the only excuse you will ever have to call yourself special. And if someone you love lets you down, don't fault yourself for not trusting him or her. Fault yourself for not trusting your love enough to forgive his or her trespasses. You never know what the future will bring, whether there will be a tomorrow or not. Now is. Study hard, work hard, play harder. Don't be bound by rules. Don't hurt anybody. Never grow up and never ever live somebody else's dream. Remember, however many times you go wrong, no matter how many times you fail, despair, feel like this world is against you, in the words of Bob Marley, at the end, everything's gonna be alright. And in my words, life may be. Ant mein sab kuch theek ho jata hai. Aur agar theek na ho, to ant nahi. Picture abhi baaki hai mere paas. All you kids here, please take it as the only truth you need to know. In the end, everything will be alright.